I've got the Canon ADD right here and I want to talk about one of its new features that happens to be one of my favorite features and I'm so glad that Canon is finally starting to put this in their cameras and that is their intervalometer and their interval movie mode. Let's talk about them and show you what they can do. First thing I want to talk about is interval timer. That's available to you when you're in photo mode. So with live view turned off, you can go to the menu, camera page four, interval timer and enable it. Now if I come back in here I can either touch the screen or touch info to get to more options. I can set my interval, the number of time between the shots and that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to take a shot or a photo every so many seconds. In this case let's do two seconds and the number of shots from zero to unlimited. So I'm just going to say unlimited. I'm going to say OK and uh, I've already pre-set up my shot. Now here's a couple of quick tips for getting better time-lapse shots. You want the camera to be on manual mode. You're setting the shutter speed, you're setting the aperture, your white balance should be set as well. It's basically, you want to take away all of the options that the camera has available to it to change from shot to shot because it might decide from shot to shot that it needs to change to adjust for white balance or the passing of a cloud uh, and you don't want that to happen because that's going to introduce differences in your shots that are going to really stand out and make it look less good. I've also pre-focused and I've switched the lens to manual focus. So I'm in manual mode, I've chosen appropriate aperture, chosen appropriate shutter speed, I've set my white balance, I have made it manual focus and now I can press the shutter button and it's now going to take a shot every two seconds until I turn the camera off. And you heard a beep there for a second. That's a little silly. You can turn the beep off as well in manual focus. It will still beep to confirm from time to time that it is getting focus. All right, that's a look at the interval built in. Now let's look at the difference when you switch to movie mode. In movie mode, first let's get our focus again. There we go. And switch back to manual focus so it's not refocusing between shots. I'm going to go into the menu. And I'm going to go to the right. And I now have on tab 5, time lapse movie. So the earlier option I showed you gives you an image file, raw, JPEG, whatever you have set up. I typically like to shoot medium or small RAWs. That gives me post-processing capabilities to those images that I can really adjust them to look the way I want and then using a program like LR Time Lapse built into Lightroom or I should say a plugin that you can build into Lightroom uh, really get a beautiful time lapse movie out of that. The downside to that though is there's a lot of post-processing work that needs to be done. You have to import all of those images you have to edit them. You just have to edit one and sync it, really. And then you have to export and you have to have LR time lapse or some other program that's going to take all of these individual images for you and put them into one video. So they've also included a mode for people who don't want to do that. And there are a lot of times where I just want a quick time lapse and I don't need or plan on doing a lot of post processing. So that's time lapse movie mode. And I can enable that, but let's look at our info and details available to us here. So in this, it's a very, very similar setup. It looks a little different, say every two seconds. Number of shots. We do have a limit to the number of shots in this case because what it actually is doing is doing a video file. So it's not going to let you do unlimited number of shots. So let's say 300. And nicely, you can watch down below, it gives us the total time it will need to record this, 9 minutes, 58 seconds, and the amount of playback. And I believe that's calculated at 24 or 30 frames a second. So that gives you an idea of how long your time-lapse movie is going to last. You can see that for 10 minutes of filming, every two seconds, you're only going to get 10 seconds of a time-lapse. Now that seems like a very short period of time, but in reality, that is often plenty of time for a time-lapse. People aren't going to sit and watch a single scene time-lapse for more than a few seconds at a time, unless something really amazing is happening and changing. Most good time-lapses you've seen see switch from shot to shot every few seconds to give the viewer something different to look at. 
But for now, this all looks good to me. Let's just change this real quick to 400 or 500, and you can see how it says it's now going to take 16 minutes, and now our playback will be 16 seconds. So that all looks good. Let's say OK. And then it is the same process. We're going to hit Start. Um, and we then are told to start the movie recording by pressing the shutter button. Now, it's smart enough to turn Live View off, but it is basically running a very slow movie. Uh, it, it is capturing electronically different than a picture. And when it's done, it's going to present us with a video file. That video file is ready to go, ready to be shared, ready to be uploaded to YouTube. Those are all benefits of it. Downside is this is a little bit more battery dependent, or I should say battery hungry. It's going to use more energy. Uh, and you don't, you're going to have a lot less post-processing abilities. But again, you want to make sure you're in as most manual uh, options as possible. All of those settings should be the same. Autofocus, your white balance should be uh, fixed to a value. Um, and you, you want to make sure that you're in manual mode so that your aperture and your shutter speed are selected and not changing during the course of the video. We can talk more about changing and bramping those with other programs down the road. I'll be coming back with more time-lapse tips. I have some older videos, though, that do a pretty good job now. I'll link those at the end. And this ADD came from Lens Pro to Go. I borrowed it from them because I wanted to take some time and work on a few projects uh, with this camera and to share this bit of information with you all. I invite you to go check them out. I'll put a link right down below. They are a great gear rental place. And when you first land on their pages, if you've been gear rental shopping in the past, you might notice that it feels or looks a little more expensive than some of the competitors, but they build the shipping costs in. So their costs are extremely competitive with others. They just show you that cost up front. They don't hit you with that 60 or $70 shipping charge at the end. Also, they are a small company that is full. Everybody who works there is an awesome photographer or videographer, and you can get them on the phone if you've got questions about gear that's ended up in your hands and you need some help, you need some adjustments, you need to figure out what you're doing with it, uh, and they're great for that. And they include a lollipop. How awesome is that? So check them out. I thank them for sending this camera along. I'll be working with them some in the future. There's a link right down below where you can find out more information about Lens Pro to go. And if you've got any questions, about time lapses, about the Canon ADD, you're welcome to leave those down below too. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.